In web pages, it's very common to ask the user to enter a month and day. But if you've been working on the web for a while, you know that users can enter in all kinds of bizarre things, such as February 31st. If you want to make your month and day a little bit smarter so that users are only offered reasonable options, legitimate possible ones, you can make your menus dynamic. And it doesn't have to be just for month and day. It can be for all kinds of things. But you can use JavaScript to do this, so let's get started. If you're following along with the exercise files, this is Chapter 7, Example 2, script.html. In this form, we have your standard select ID with your usual 12 months, numbered 0 through 11. But under days, it doesn't contain anything at all. There's the option of day, and then that's it. So we're going to handle setting up days through JavaScript. Here's our basic initialization steps. We just need to fill it in. When a knit form runs, when the page is first loaded, there's a couple things we want to do. We want to set the months to always start at the beginning. So we set document.getElementById Pass the month string dot selected index set it to zero and then once again by ID months dot on change equals populate days. So when we change the months field, that's going to call the populate days function. So now we need to write the populate days function. Parentheses and curly braces. And we know how many days you can have in a month. So we set up an array called month days. So it's a new array. And then inside there, we know there's January has 31, February has 28, March 31, April 30, and so on. August, September, October, November, and December. Then we set up a new variable called month string which is this dot options, and then we're looking inside the array for this dot selected index. That tells us what the user picked. So if selected index is 6, we know they picked July. Again, 0 relative. So we're looking for the value. If month string isn't equal to nothing, then we know they entered a valid month. They didn't just somehow pick the please pick a month. We say var the month equals parse int. Parse int is something we haven't seen before. What that does is it takes a string and turns it into a number. So we want a valid number because we're going to be using it as an array index. And just in case there's something else to it, it came in as a string, it came in as an object, whatever, we're going to turn it into a number and force it to. So parse int is, we're going to take parse int of month string. Now, you say document.get element by id days dot options dot length because we're setting the size of it. we're setting how many options it's going to have we start off with it being zero because if it previously had 31 and now we're setting it to february we want it to have 28 we don't want to just set the first 28 options and forget to erase the last few it needs to go back smaller again. 
So now we now add on what we want. 4 var i equals 0, i less than month days, the month, i plus plus, which adds one on, which increments i, and then inside that loop we say document.get element by id days options i that's we're setting the ith option in the days field is going to be a new option and its value is going to be i plus 1 we don't say i plus plus because we're not actually trying to increment i. We're trying to just pass the value of i plus 1. So instead of going from 0 to 30, we want it to store 1 through 31 into the 0 through 30 options. And that should be all there is to it. So, so save your JavaScript, and we will switch back out and load our page and see if it works. March goes to 0 to 31. Good. February, 1 to 28. August is 1 through 31. So this way, you cannot enter in a bad value. If you go and enter in August 31st and then you switch back to February, you've lost that 31 because February 31 is not a valid value. So again, when the page loads, init form is called. The month's index is set back to zero to start at the beginning. And we set the onChange event handler to call populate days. Populate days takes a look at what was entered into the months field and then uses that to figure out how many days should be allowed in the new days field. Here's the HTML page. You can see the values are zero through 11 for each month, but there's nothing here. We have to add that dynamically. Next up, we get into more complex forms and making fields required.